Hi everyone. So in this video, we'll be discussing about data management in microservices. So unlike monolithic architecture, uh, where data resides typically in RDBMSs and could be easily accessed using uh, SQL queries, data access is a little complex in microservices architecture. So what is the reason uh, behind this uh, complex mechanism, mechanism in microservice? This is because data owned by each microservice is private to that particular service only. And that data can be accessed via APIs. And data encapsulation uh, showcases that the microservices are loosely coupled and they can evolve independently of one another. So let's discuss uh, detail about data management in the next slide. So as you can see in the figure, basically, microservices often use different kind of databases. Uh, one microservices might use MySQL, others might use any new SQL database like MongoDB. And because of this, these services are uh, loosely coupled and lending to better performance and scalability. But there are certain challenges that comes into picture when the uh, like services are using their independent databases. So one of the major challenge is maintaining consistency of business services across multiple services is a bit different, difficult. And implementation of queries that recover data from multiple services that use different DB formats is quite cumbersome. So these are some problems that uh, occurs when uh, data management in microservices. Okay. Now we'll discuss about event-driven architecture. So uh, event-driven architecture is widely used in uh, architecture in microservices. So what does it mean basically? So the microservices trigger and update the business entities based on any event and publishes an event when some action occurs. So uh, as you can see in the uh, figure, so basically suppose an order microservice publishes an event when a particular customer places an order. And it also updates its private order table, which is kind of a database table. And other microservices, suppose inventory is subscribed to those events, they will receive an event and updates its private inventory or database, which might lead to an event published by inventory service. So this is how event-driven architecture works. Now, what are the benefits and challenges that comes into picture in event-driven architecture? So one of the advantages, it allows the implementation of transactions, which span multiple services and offer ultimate consistency. And what are the challenges that comes into uh, picture when uh, event-driven architecture? This model is sometimes very complex and often you must implement rollback roll compensating transactions to recover from application level failures. So suppose uh, in between a transaction, uh, something happens. So we will have to implement rollback and roll back the whole operations. So this is one of the challenge that comes into picture in case of event-driven architecture. And uh, service subscribers must be able to detect and ignore duplicate events also. So this is also a very big problem in case of event-driven architecture. Now, next very important concept in microservices is CQRS. So what exactly is a CQRS? So querying in a microservice architecture are implemented through command query responsibility segregation, which is known as CQRS. In CQRS, the application is divided into two parts. So component side, command side takes care of uh, creating, updating and deleting requests. And it emits event when data changes. And query side executes queries against one or more materialized views, which are kept updated by subscribing to the stream of event released when data changes. So CQRS supports event-driven architecture. Few complex domains may be uh, simpler to tackle by utilizing CQRS while handling high-performance applications. 
CQRS allows separation of a load from reads and writes. This allows the uh, scale the services independently. So CQRS is a widely used uh, design patterns in microservices that separates this uh, uh, logic basically. The, the, that separates the application component into two uh, that takes care of the command side and query side execution. So this is all for this video guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you.